Hi there and welcome to Hegley Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is the fifth video on sequences. We're going to be looking at geometric progressions. It is mainly aimed at A-level maths but is applicable to lots of other maths modules also. So hopefully you find the video useful. Okie doke, what is a geometric progression? Well, geometric sequence or a geometric progression is produced by multiplying each term by a constant value, sometimes known as the common ratio and often denoted R. So if we take a sequence such as this, 3, 6, 12, 24, hopefully you can realise that each time to get to the next term we are multiplying by 2. So we're doubling each time. So the common ratio on this one would be 2. How about the next sequence? 32, 16, 8, 4. What's going on there? Again, hopefully with a little bit of thought, you can realise that we're multiplying each term by a half. So to get to the next term, we multiply by a half, and so on and so forth. And this sequence is getting smaller and smaller. How about the next sequence? Negative 2, 2, negative 2, 2. What's going on there? Well, we can see that each time we're multiplying by negative 1. We multiply that by negative 1 and so on and so forth. Now the first sequence that we have here is said to be divergent. And the reason is because it keeps growing. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's heading towards infinity. The sequence below, however, is said to be convergent. And that's because it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And in fact, the only way that a sequence can con converge and get smaller is if R is between minus 1 and 1. If R is greater than that, is outside of this um, particular range, then the sequence will ultimately, or should ultimately, diverge. The sequence below, though, is an oscillating sequence. I figured if I could spell oscillating, let's try that again. It's an oscillating sequence, and that means that it's 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 changing, but it's not growing. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at. Um, how we might work out the nth term then of a geometric progression or a geometric sequence. Like before, um, we're going to call the first term u of 1, we're going to call that a. And to get to the next term, u of 2, we need to multiply a by the common ratio of r. So we get a times r. u of 3. I'm going to take the previous term a times r and multiply that by r to get ar squared. And similarly, the next term, u of 4, u of 4 will be found by doing a times r cubed. And we will go on and on and on until we get to u of n, the nth term, which will ultimately be a times r to the power of n minus 1. And that's the nth term of a geometric progression. a times r to the power of n minus 1. And how can we work out r for any, for any um, geometric progression? Well, if we do a term in the sequence, a particular term in the sequence, u of n, divided by u of n minus 1. So if I do, for example, the four, uh, u of 4 divided by u of 3, I will get r. If I did u of 3 divided by u of 2, I will get r, and so on. So if we take two terms that are beside each other and do the, um, do the, the first one uh, divided by the previous one, we should get the common ratio r. Okay. Let's have a look at it in practice now. So I need to find the sixth and nth terms of this sequence. So the 
find the sixth term. Well, we already have the first four, so we should be able to get the sixth one quite easily. We're times in by two, times in by two, times in by two. So the common ratio r equals two. So that means that the sixth term, we need to, we're going to need the fifth. The fifth term is going to be 48. So let's write that down. The fifth term will be 48. We got that by doing 24 multiplied by the common ratio of 2, which is 48. And then the sixth term will be the fifth term, 48, multiplied by 2, which is going to give us 96. So the sixth term is 96. How about the nth term? The nth term equals a, the first term, multiplied by r to the power n which is going to be 3 times the common ratio is 2, uh, n minus 1 should I say, <clears throat> 3 times um, 2 to the power of n minus 1. And let's just check that this worked because if it does work then we should be able to get the sixth term straight away. Let's try um, the sixth again. Is it equal to 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5, 2 to the power of 5, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 32 times 3, 32 times 3 is indeed 96. So it works beautifully there. Okay, another example. I'm told that the second term of a geometric progression is 4 and that the fourth term is 8. So the second term, remember that the terms of a geometric progression go a, ar, ar squared and so on all the way up to a, r to the power of n minus 1. So the second term, ar, is 4. And the fourth term, a r cubed, is 8. Let's see if we can work out the common ratio. Because if I can work out the common ratio r, that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going, first thing I'm going to do is work out the common ratio r. Then I'm going to look to work out the, common, uh, the first value a. And then we can use the formula. a times r to the power of n minus 1. Let's see if we can work out r now. So I'm going to do a r cubed divided by a r which is going to give me 8 over 4 which is equal to 2. So let's see what happens here. The two a's cancel out and r goes into r cubed r squared times so we get that the common ratio squared equals 2 which implies that the common ratio must be equal to the square root of 2. Okay, so we know the common ratio is the square root of 2. Let's see if we can use the information from the beginning, uh, say this one, to work out the value of a. So we know that a times r equals 4. But we know what r is now. So a times root 2 equals 4, which implies that a equals 4 over the square root of 2. Okay, we're going to have to rationalize this denominator. So a will equal, multiplying above and below by the square root of 2, will equal 4 times root 2 over 2 and then simplifying that we get 2 root 2 so a is 2 root 2 we know the common ratio um, r now we're looking for the tenth term so we want u of 10 and that's going to equal a times r to the power of 9 
which equals 2 root 2 multiplied by common ratio, which we worked out to be root 2, to the power of 9. And I'm going to use my calculator to do this. Maybe we can do it without the calculator. Let's see. Two, root 2 times root 2 uh, to the power of 9 is going to give me 2 root 2 to the power of 10. Okay. Well, root 2 is 2 to the power of a half. So I've got 2 to the power of a half all to the power of 10. So I've got 2 times 2 to the power of a half all to the power of 10, which equals 2 times 2 to the power of 5, using the laws of indices, which is 2 to the power of 6. 2 to the power of 6, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Lovely. So we found out that the tenth term in the sequence is 64. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll be back again with another video soon. All the best and good luck with the revision.